Okay, let's see what happens. See if this you get this going here. You see us? Are we live? Hello, anybody, anybody there? there? Is anybody out there? Nothing. Let's see. I don't see it here either. Oh, we got one person on there. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Who do we have? Two people. We're still waiting for our pages to come up. Welcome guys. Uh Cosplay nerds and free at last. Oh, Alex, uh, Alyssa, Alyssa. I don't know who free at last is. Cosplay. Cosplay. I don't yeah. know why I'm not getting it here. Yeah, it's not coming up on here yet either. It must just be coming up. Welcome to another Wednesday night chat. Yeah. Oh, I see people are starting to come now. Oh, you got it. How'd you find it? I just went to my page. There we go. I got it. Yep, there it is. All right, I can see you talk. Does that make sense? If it comes up, there we go. So we have nine people. That's good. Thank you guys for joining us again. Let us know if you're getting tired of these. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Duluth today. Um, it's not our first time to go to Duluth, but the first time to uh, drive around through Duluth. And it's kind of like a mini LA. It's really, really, except for the, the buildings are phenomenal. Beautiful buildings, old, really old. But man, there are a million people there. There really are. And they're doing tons of construction, so it was really hard to drive through there. And it all hangs off the side of a hill side, so that was hard. Aaron Costello, first time here. Hello, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Yep. Yeah, this is as exciting as it gets. So, <laughs> yeah. And Donna's here. And aloha, everyone, from Ruth. I got a thumb from free. Um, it's one of the warmer days. And the good news is, is we're supposed to get air conditioning, do a, air, a new air conditioner in the restaurant, probably in about two weeks. So hey, Johnny and really Tracy. Big. Hey, hey. Hey. Welcome. Barbie Swatters. If you don't Thank know you. them, if you haven't seen them, uh, they did a really good video on replacing the roof. RV SWAT. RV SWAT. Check them out. Yeah. They're um, fun to follow and they're really nice people. Yeah, and if you, I think if you go to We their, met them and we still like them. Yeah. <laughs> no, they still like us. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they're running a restaurant in South Dakota at Hart Ranch. I'm sure if you go there, they'll, they'll uh, do a meetup. They'll give you a free napkin with spoons and forks and stuff. Right. <laughs> Franklin Smith spent a summer in Duluth. Uh, spent a summer in Duluth. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's really a, it, it's an interesting place. I mean, it's the only place that you can be in town and there's ships parked next to you. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, it's uh, it's it looks like an ocean. It's a lake, but it's a giant. You know, Superior Lake is huge. And uh, they get some pretty wave, big waves there and stuff. But uh, there's a lot of commerce that goes on. By the way, let me warn everybody right up front. Yes, my allergies. My, we had to wash the truck today because the pollen's so thick on the truck we couldn't see out of the windows. And we did use those. Uh, I don't know if you saw our video where we did the uh, country bound microfiber towels, uh, quick dry towels. Sure. We're going to do a review on them. Well, it, we did it. It's just I just being, ed, have to edit it and put it out there. Yeah, it worked out really good. I was very impressed. Uh, it took the big towel, one little towel, to dry my truck. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Two of those big towels would probably do the job. Do the job, but real and easily. So soft. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they dry out real quick, and, uh, and they you, take up a little. You know, they take up this. We usually have those uh, big bath towels, and we got like six or eight of those in the back of the truck. And usually two or three of them are soaked by the time we're dry, done drying the truck. And but then this, they get mildewy yeah. smelling. And these towels dry in a flash. And uh, they're also good for drying off your person. Absolutely. Another video I put I put on, uh, I think it was yesterday, it was about travel trailers. And 
some of the problems that these travel trailers are having. The frames are just rotting and and it's all wood framing and everything else. We actually, it was a Ballard trailer. We had one like that and uh, we got rid of it. It was pretty, pretty new when we got rid of it, but um, oh my gosh, I, the construction of them things is just sticks and twigs and aluminum and not the, the axle ratings and everything else are nothing near what you would think that that thing should should have so um, I'm going to go back to my philosophy if you buy an older travel trailer you'll find that they're heavier but the reason why they're heavier is they're stronger these new ones are super lightweight and you put I mean they're they're basically designed to carry about 300 pounds worth of your stuff and I mean that's that's not very good. You can't. Can. Yeah, and I mean we we have 300 pounds worth of stuff and cameras stuff. Yeah, right. So yeah, it's uh, the, my first suggestion if you can. I think motorhomes for full timing, or certain fifth wheels are real good for full timing. You can full time at anything. You can full time in a tent or a pop up camper or whatever you want. It just depends on how you want to how you want to live your life. But I think if you want to live like, kind of like you're in a house, but you're, you're mobile, a motorhome or a fifth wheel is probably going to be your best bet. Travel trailers are just not built to the same level. And, and now with the new laws that have come into effect, you're going to find that they're not even close. Does, it, does anybody have any uh, questions or do you want me to just keep rambling? I guess I have to ramble. So These guys, tight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hello from Minneapolis. You two hope to visit you this summer. Dale. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. We actually, I don't know if anyone would see, but Lynn Bar. Oh, Jones. Remember Jones' last name? But they, they're uh, the ones that we went and did the beat up with. They actually uh, probably blow their their big thing, but they bought a hollow. Uh, 93 Holiday Rambler Navigator. They got a really nice rig. They got a really good price on it. And they're all excited because they're going to be able to uh, retire in time and, and get out here and do what we're doing. So I always say the best time to retire is younger. Just do it. You know? Yeah, well, you don't need to haul your walker up into yeah. your rig, but that's okay too. When you have your rig, <laughs> that's the time to go. Because when you, if you wait till you're 65 or whatever you do, you're gonna find that you wasted a lot of time. And you usually can't go far from your doctor appointments, and that's the truth. Do we work tomorrow, Alexia? Yes, we, yes, do. we do. Yeah, we got to work a long shift tomorrow. We're we're working from like uh, 1:30. 1 30 till 10. What time? Oh, what size is my gas tank that you add a quarter ATF? Is a hundred gallon. But I, I add a quarter of transmission fluid to about every 50 gallons, or even less. I mean, you could you could put a lot more in it, uh, probably run even better, but I mean, with one quart, every time I put 50 gallons, every time I fill it, I put a quart in, unless I'm only putting 15 or 20 gallons, then I'll skip. What do you use to level your coach? Jacks, pads, or both? We have HWH. Uh, Jacks. Uh, hydraulic jacks. And what's kind of cool about them is instead of coming out straight down, they come out at an angle like this. So when this thing actually sets up, it's really solid. And then what we did is we, we cut uh, three quarter inch plywood, uh, 16 by 16 squares, and we doubled them up, glued them, and then screwed them together. I drilled a hole so I could use an awning hook to pull them out from underneath the motorhome. And I set those underneath the landing gear because uh, we were actually in Texas one time <laughs> and we were all, everything was wonderful that it rained and we were like in the ditch where the water came through. We just sat there and watched every, our chairs and everything just wash we away. We had a boot scraper we never found. Yeah, we never found. Just washed away. Anyway, I was almost ready to just start up, drive away from the uh, generator, just leave every, because I, I thought the motor oil was just going to get, you know, under, you know, washed. But anyway, when we got, everything got all done, we went out, the motor oil was sitting weird, and the leveler on the left rear had went down into the ground, so I went to lift the jacks up, and there's just springs that returned those jacks, well, the, the pad came off, 
and we couldn't get the shaft up. And we, uh, it was just a nightmare. So Darla and I ended up going underneath there and digging it all out. And her and I got that thing back on after about two and a half hours, and then was able that we and, moved. And, and that's when we were uh, doing gate guarding on the oil rigs. And there were mice, and there were snakes, and there were spiders, and there were scorpions. And yeah. It was fun. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see. I'll go down? Who's going I'll down? I'll go retire now. Oh, yeah. We're on the road now. Yeah. They did the Work same thing. Work on the thing. road. Yeah, uh, Johnny and Tracy did the same. Harvey Swat. Harvey Swat did the same thing as us. Their first meetup was with us. And we had fun. Yeah, we we worked on his motorhome a little. We didn't fix the roof because the roof was all intact at that time. But we did everything else, got it rutted and stuff. And maybe that was the problem, Johnny. We shouldn't have got it rutted so good. You could maybe <laughs> only go at 25 miles an hour. Was, that off. other guy did that, so it would blow the roof off. <laughs> but anyway, we did a video with them. If anyone hasn't seen it, that's one of our videos. They uh, a lot of people really like that interview. I'll that uh, link to. Uh, I'll put a link in the down below in the description to their channel and to that video specifically. When is it busiest at the Hayward KOA? August? Yeah, July and August. Um, do they have little activities every weekend? We're, we're going to have the chocolate weekend here pretty soon. They, that's pretty wild. Everything. They play bingo for chocolate. They, they, they do all kinds of games for chocolate. Everything's chocolate themed. Um, we have tons of chocolate ice creams, different flavors, and then they have this huge slip and slide out on the grassy area, and um, they load it up with uh, chocolate pudding, and the kids and some adults slide right through it. It's really funny. If you go to their website, you'll probably see that, Yeah. some of the shots of that. What is the place that you visited that you fell in love with? Well, there's quite a few. Um, probably one of the prettiest places we've ever been to. I ground at Sugar Beets in uh, East Grand Forks. Minnesota is real pretty. Um, the trouble the, the trouble with it is is it goes like 40 beach. below. The beach, yeah, we, <laughs> we stayed at Ventura at Rincon Beach or right on, I mean, there's a, a seawall. <laughs> if that wasn't there, your, your rig would get wet. That's a really pretty place. Another really awesome place that we've camped at the beach. I'll try something. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is the video from last night going up? That was just for us. The one I took last night, that's going to be, we're going to edit that and maybe put it in the little thing. Part in the of the office. reason that we're doing these lives is because we're working so much that we don't have time to put together a video. Um, but we'll do a montage as soon as. Right now, we're only getting one day off a week. We're working six days, so it makes it really hard. Yeah, it would be really boring if we just kept going around. I've been talking to some of the work campers about doing videos. The hard part about that is, is everybody's everybody's in the process of working. We spent a lot of time getting the campground, you know, all fired up. Now we're working six days a week, so really, uh, hopefully, and, we get the two and days a week. Let's put that out there right now. We are still looking for people yeah. in housekeeping. So if you guys want to pack up and come out for the summer, that'd be great. Yeah. And uh, we also need another couple, I think, for the kitchen. Hey, I heard there's someone coming, but you know it's always good to yet. try. Yeah. Rick says, "Hey guys, almost forgot about your live talk. Laugh out loud. Are, are you on? Are you on our economic refugees group on Facebook? Because I uh, I put a thing up there Remind every them. day, pretty much reminding everybody from like Sunday on. So otherwise, I guess we're just forgettable. But." <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, we had a stream running through our tent on, the, <laughs> yeah, when it rained. By Donna, I might say. She said she's going to dinner free at last. Oh, okay. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for coming. Watch the replay if you're so inclined. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually went through a hurricane when we were on a motorcycle ride one time. We woke up in the morning and the water was almost to our air mattress. That was a fun one. Yeah, water and tents are not a good prop, you know, thing. Even water, heavy water like we were in, I mean, it was it was a river. It was flash flooding. Pooh Bear says, don't the feet skid if they're raised at an angle? Landing gear. Do they skid? They move a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it takes, it a settle. Sometimes I have to hit the button manually and put a little, a little on the left or a little on the right. 
but uh, this thing is so heavy it, it it settles pretty good so I haven't touched the the levelers now for about a month yeah, so, you thought you came in the other day and thought you needed. Yeah, to be I looked and you were fine. I got little leveler deals I put on my dashboard and over by my driver's seat. Bubble levels. The secret with that is, is I had a lady come back one time and she said these things don't work. They don't tell. But I said, did you level a coach first and then put them on? Oh, is that how you do it? I said, yeah. I got to make sure the thing is level first and then you put the little, <laughs> the little things. That was when we were working at Brett's. Well, how do you know if it's level if you don't use a level? I remember I used to do it on the on the sink yeah we just have put a, a big a level. level just put a regular level and check it and what you like you you're level. pretty sure another thing is we open the shower door yeah and if that thing opens or closes we know we're off a little bit there too so as long as all that's working out we're uh we're good to go mm -hmm. let's see I, I wanted you to know your opinion oh wanted to know our opinion of class super c's mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it depends on which ones. Um, you know, as far as the uh, the truck parts, I mean, they're usually either Freightliners or they're like Chevrolets or GMC, and they usually have the. Uh, this he says I I E Chevy C fifty five hundred. Yeah, they, yeah. The, the the mechanics of that is a you know it's what's that the Duramax diesel that's a good diesel man they um, you know a lot of the people that pull these big fifth wheels have a Duramax. Um, also, they, the, I'm sure they come with the Allison transmission. So that part of it's really good. A lot of it, though, is who makes it. You know, the Super C's haven't been around a super long time, so it's hard to really go and find a, you know, an older one that's like super overkilled as far as construction. Um, you just have to really look at them and and. Um, See what you can see. I mean, you know, interior walls where you could push on them real easy, and they, you know, stuff like that. It just, just kind of gives you an idea that when they built the thing, they were just, they were just trying to mass produce this stuff and get as much money for them as they can. It's kind of how, the, honestly, the RV industry is. I think is more crooked than the Automotive. car, car industry, and they'll lie to you. Um, it just, that was one of the problems. We sold RVs for a while at, at Quartzsite, and it was hard to lie to people. And, and uh, well, you know, we didn't. yeah, well, we didn't uh, basically, <laughs> but it, it hard. then they kept, what they would do and is they, they would get us to us. line the customers up and get them to fall in love with something. I tell them, ah, that's a great. And then next thing I know, they're saying, hey, you got to come over here. We got to talk to you. And they put another salesman on it. And they end up leaving with some hunk of junk. And it's like, they come back and I wish I would have listened to, listen to you and stuff. Anyway, um, Super C's, I mean, they're they're heavy duties. Uh, I don't know if you, I know you get real tall ceilings with them. I don't know if you get as much floor because for one thing, you give up the cab area. So that makes it where you don't have as much floor area. And it's more built on like a class C thing. You just, you want a little bit of construction on the, on the actual body. Let's see. Hey guys, wanted to know you're okay. We did that. 70 miles an hour, blew the roof off. Laughing. Yeah, well, she wouldn't do 70 before. <laughs> Should have such a fast thing. Chocolate slip and slide. Yeah. That's we. That's the chocolate weekend. We. It, the ice cream is like all, uh, what is that? Death by chocolate, all this chocolate. And then they have a big slip and slide and they put all this chocolate pudding and all these adults and everybody. <laughs> It's wild. It's fun. It's a wild time, yeah. Let's see. We have candy bar bingo here. It's awesome. Yeah. And Rick says, I don't do Facebook. Huh. Okay. Well, you just have to, you know, we usually one day a week or something, we put the little warning thing that we're going to have a, a video. <laughs> we'll try to do that. Actually, this will probably be the last time that you see us like this because I've I'm trying to switch over to our Canon for doing these videos, and uh, and we're going to have a little more control once I do that. I'll be able to do things with the like everything to run through the computer. I got another program in here to run it. So right now we're just doing it on uh, my uh, Pixel Two, and uh, actually uh, Johnny and uh, Tracy gave us our gimbal, Yay. so it works great for our phone. Thank so, you a million times. Yeah, it's sitting on that. Yeah, really nice. uh, yeah, it works good. 
both seem to be Gulfstream. Yeah, you know, um, so let me tell you about gold stream, gold streams. They are kind of like the uh, the Pontiac Oldsmobile of RVs. They're they're not the Cadillacs and they're not the Kias. I mean, they're they're more of a middle. Uh, I would have no problem with owning a Gulfstream. The BT Cruisers are Gulfstreams. They're real good. They make a good quality product, Some, but they're like every other manufacturer, they do make junk. So you just got to make sure that you ask the questions and read the brochures and, and, and whatever you can get a hold of as far as the RVs, you know, manufacturing and stuff. I mean, a lot of times you can tell if you buy if you buy an RV and it's got a six gallon water tank, hot water tank, and it's, you know, it's just, you just got a lot of nothing stuff in it. Just, that, yeah, just. You know, the, a microwave and, and, and a cooktop, you know, instead of putting a convection oven or something, a lot of times that'll tell you that you're not getting what you, really what you're paying for. They do that stuff. It's like you get a three three landing gear leveling system. Um, I, I see people all the time trying to convince me that a three, three uh, hydraulics are going to level better than four. Um, don't believe it. They don't because especially with one of these with the door in the front because every time you walk out it you know the frame will flex and everything else and, and you'll you'll feel it you know what it is is the company's found that if you drop one hydraulic unit you save like eight or nine hundred dollars when you do that on you know a couple of hundred rigs that's a lot of money let's see any plans for a puppy we're in the process again. Actually, the lady that we were going to get the puppy from, she had two females. And I talked to her the other day. I saw her and just said hi to her. She says, I, I haven't said anything to you yet, but I think we got another batch of puppies coming from her other female. So uh, we got a couple of opportunities. Believe me, I, bought, I drive Darla crazy. I want a dog. I want a dog. I never, you know. I don't know if you saw the video on Facebook that we put up, but it was of Mackie, our dog from before. On the group page. On the group page, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I used to just say, well, it's bath day, time to take a bath, and he'd head for the shower. Not even to him, just yeah. in conversation. Yeah. That's how much he was in tune to us. He's so, I mean, that, that dog knew every, he knew we were leaving before we knew we were leaving. <laughs> I mean, he just really had it dialed in. Yeah, but we definitely... The thing is, a lot of people say, well, you know, go to the Humane Society. We did. We went over here and talked to the Humane Of course, they got a lot of pit bulls. They had a hound in there. They had a, a, a screaming, houndy bark. There's no way. We're... <laughs> that wouldn't work at a campground. No. The and pit bulls don't work good either. you Rottweilers into campgrounds. Yeah. They had one that was a mix of both. Sweet-looking so, dogs, and I'm sure they make great pets. I mean, my mom had a pit bull that thought she was a, I don't know, poodle. She yeah. didn't know she was a pit bull. She was a sweetheart. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, it, it I used to raise Dobermans and even even me trading them and doing everything else with them, uh, there was certain there was a certain thing in the back of my head that I always knew that that dog could turn on me. So Like it did me. Yeah. And my son and my friends <laughs> and the best part about her was, is I lived in a pretty rough neighborhood. My first house I bought, it was 19 when I got my first house. And I just wanted to come home to my stuff. So I went from Boston Terriers to Dobermans. And you know what? I never had anyone take anything because that dog would have tore him up. So Terry Mutant, my default is a 2000, 2001 or two Newbar Dutch Star, but no room to park it at home. Well, if you buy a rig like that, sell your house, and then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> the, Problem solved. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, that uh, those those motorhomes are basically. Of course, there's two different ones. There's a there's a uh, a new bar Dutch Star that would be on a Freightliner chassis with a Caterpillar motor, and some of those have LP gas. Uh, generators you you have to you you want to get if you're going to get a new bar you want to get the spartan chassis the cummins 300 you want to get the diesel generator 
So those are the three things you watch out for because when you when you get the cheaper one, you're getting cheaper everything. That's the point I was making. When you, like on the Class Cs, you, you start looking at the appliances and you know how they put the thing together, whether they put a lot of, they put a lot of really cool stuff, good quality wood stuff. You know, when you open a cabinet, you know whether it's press board, you know, laminated press board. Um, everything in here is solid oak. And it's all rounded edges. I'm pointing at all this so you guys can't see. But there's a lot of detail. And, and that will tell you, I mean, we've got a lot of good stuff in here. It's older, but um, you don't be afraid of older motor homes. Don't be afraid of older, like Class B vans or, or the ones that you really have to worry about are the, the older travel, the not the real old, but like an old 708 in that area, travel trailer and um, some of the class C's because they'll tend to leak up there in the front by the, the front uh, sleeping area. So how is your TV reception here? It's perfect. Oh wait, you skipped over Alexia saying the pudding slip and slide stuff's hard to clean up. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's your job. <laughs> that's your well, job. Franklin was asking, how is your TV reception here? We have a, uh, a road trip, White Guard road trip, and we have Dish Network with a dual DVR. And unless it's uh, lightning and thundering and really heavy, cloudy, rainy and everything, it's pretty good. Hi, Stevie. Hi, Trey's not here tonight. Yeah, where's, Trey? where's Trey? See, Steve, you're here and Trey isn't here. DDK's here and said hi. You know that is, right? Oh. D what? Who is it? It's her. That's you. Oh. <laughs> Darla K. How do you guys puppies? A Boston? Boston Terrier? If you got if you got Boston Terriers, I definitely am interested. Any experience with water leaks with the motorhome? We're looking for a class A, but not sure how to make sure we don't get one with past problems. Well, the, the sad thing about it is anything can leak. A Prevost can leak anything. A van, um, anything can leak. If they, if, if it's a vehicle, a house can leak. So the main thing is, is if you see a lot of, set, we've had some leaks. I'm not gonna lie to you, especially on this slide out, but I finally got it where it doesn't leak anymore. And not like it was pouring, but it was dripping. And it was coming in, there's a seal. When this thing goes out, you can hear the wall just kind of almost crack and then it backs up a little bit. Like, ur, ur. And what it does is it breaks the seal right behind that right behind that wood panel up there. You see where, I, see where I'm pointing there? On the other side of that. Well, I got some of that really good uh, single-sided four inch wide tape. And I rolled that in there and made it so the water runs off. We haven't had a problem since, so. Um, I go up. I, I've got another thing. I got about about a an eight eight inch piece on the side, on the driver's side, that the rivets are broke, and I've got to go up and fix that. So it's and I want to coat the roof too. But, so, but one thing you do when when we were looking for our daughter's RV, you go in and you just look at the ceiling and see if there's. You'll see. I mean, if it's leaking bad enough, you're going to see a ring on the ceiling open all the cupboards and look and see if there's any any leaking there you're going to see water and where it's been it shows up so look for yeah any open every toy. open every, every single cabinet, cabinet. open everything yeah even your cargo bays right. um open everything cargo bays isn't that big a deal because there's no like in this there's no wood oh brisbane i want to say hi to brisbane australia yeah. hi 10, thanks 20. for joining us it's morning there thursday morning <laughs> Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, you you open everything. That's what I did. Just look at every single thing. And, you know, another thing that will leak, too, is uh, hot water heaters and stuff like that. Ours, when it starts to cool down, I'm gonna, I got, today I got a new electric uh, heater. I got a, a really nice anode rod. And uh, I'm gonna replumb that thing. It's set up to, for winterizing. We don't winterize, we live in ours. So, uh, Boy, this thing is like not working. Lagging. Anyway, uh, yeah, you you wanna you wanna check all that kind of stuff. And anytime you buy an RV like this, 
make them turn everything on every light you want to honk the horn you want to check the turn signals you want the refrigerator ready you want to make sure it's nice you tell them you want everything working and if they can't get it working then you get discounts that's how it works i know a guy that has a 70 uh, has four 70s gmc motorhomes he is restoring three and using one for parts yeah um i'm not i'm not I'm not a big those. super fan yeah. on those. His uh, dad had one. My dad had one, and then I don't know if you guys know Wanderlust. They had one. I think a lot of it is you, you have to do what this guy's going to do. You have to restore it. Most people yeah. are not going to want to. His dad's was all original in yeah. 80s and 90s. And I mean, it he was put like motors 70s. in it and trans, uh, transaxles. And, um, yeah, he did a lot of work on that thing. And the generator... It just, uh, I mean, it, for their time, they were amazing. But the trouble now is, is that there's other stuff that uh, is kind of better, you know. Hi, Makio. Makio's here, huh? I don't see her yet. S R R. Oh, there. Oh, she hasn't popped up on mine. She should. Enjoy the tech talk, but Darla looks bored <laughs> with it. <laughs> Yeah, you know what Dor Darla likes to do? She likes to sit over there behind her little desk over there and, and, and be online. And videos. Yeah. Let's see. That, that's true. My first, last Dutch Star had a Cat Freightliner 300 horse. I felt it was underpowered. Now, and it, please don't get me wrong on the Caterpillar motors. Caterpillar motors are excellent motors. They make great, great motors. The only one that do isn't great is the 3208. It's an un unrebuildable v8 they put them in a lot of motorhomes years ago and people who have them will tell you that if you have a problem with them you basically you can't really rebuild them like you can a cummins or anything else, or the other cats the other cats you can rebuild so never buy a 3208 um i couple of things with the cat i think the cats get a little worse gas mileage than the cummins um and another thing is is what they would they're not they haven't been selling caterpillar motors for a while now so it's hard to get mechanics to work on caterpillar motors in motorhomes and diesel trucks they'll work on them all day long but in motorhomes they don't want to work on them so um and i, I why I, that is i don't know uh i don't know yeah there's okay he's here hi mikio mikio um they're still good though. Dutch Star, how we're gonna go about it. Um, I spent a lot of time on the phone and they had been on the road for 18 years, I think 18 years when we met them. And they always talked about how, you know, you guys got it made, you got cell phones and you can you can Internet. Skype and all this stuff. They used to have to pull over to the side of the road and find a phone that worked, you know. But they had a Dutch Star and that was a, that was a good rig. They liked it. Well, let's see. Any recommendations on hotspots? Well, we have a Verizon um, MiFi. MiFi. And you know what? You get it's those. Like Jetpack. Yeah, jet, you could get them. So for, does RV SWAT, they said yeah. in the comments. You could get those for 30 bucks off of eBay. And then we got a SIM card. And from we, Verizon. From Verizon. And it's 150 a month for unlimited which they kind of backed off a little bit on that but they haven't said 145 still so i guess there's cheaper ways to go we're looking into that too yeah if you guys know of any let us know we're always up for saving money what do i think of a fiberglass roof on a class a i think my dutch star had a rubber roof uh, i think your dutch star had a fiberglass roof um i actually helped Uncle Jerry change an air conditioner on his roof and uh, it was fiberglass and you know the fiberglass is good uh, I, I, uh, I don't know why uh, RV SWAT I don't know why their their roof blew off I know it was pretty thin well, and it was pretty old so but and, and he had some leaks you'll see yeah. they replaced a lot of that wood up there on the roof I mean he's, he's got a lifetime warranty on that now yeah but it wasn't cheap yeah well it was because all they had to well, do was I pay know. their deductible so I, I think uh johnny said it cost ninety two hundred dollars really yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you should have took the body in. Well, never mind. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Hmm. You and Steve are eating up all the stuff here. Oh, that was a while ago. How come I don't? It's not working. I don't know. I found some Boston Terrier puppies in Wausau, Wisconsin. Yeah, but how much? Everybody wants three thousand dollars for them. I'd have to get a job. Good oh. work, at KY. And Maggie and the kids say hi. Steve says. <clears throat> three hi. Of, are you three guys? Three of on? our grandkids are watching along with our daughter-in-law. Hey guys. Hey Caleb and Sadie. Hey Gideon. Hey Maggie. We I tried. You. They wouldn't give me the check. Yeah. Well, you know what? Now you can tell someone, hey, it's got a nine thousand dollar roof on it. So that's why it costs twice as much. Let's see, eight fifty. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Pictures, Alexia. Give us pictures. Yeah. Fine. That's a lot of money, but you know, if it's the right. See, we're not looking for papers. We just want the breed. That's the main thing. We're not. We're not gonna, you know, do anything. This is crazy. Let's just see. We just. I'm gonna reset it here, so I can see what everyone's asking. If it come up, eh. nope. Yeah, well, you have to hit that play. I think it's stuck on park. Is it? Nope. Uh, it's yeah. live. Okay, don't do it. No, there we go. We're good. I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, fam. People pay more for Boston Terriers when they are, they are pitchers. Yeah. I'll show you pictures tomorrow. So we have any any other RV questions coming up? Did you turn the AC off here in the front? No. Really? It's getting hot, huh? Yeah. We're sitting here drinking coffee, and we got the back. <laughs> at you. We ought to turn the front one on. There it goes. Oh, there we go. See? Mind control. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, I, I've actually had a couple of people. I've been putting some pretty, that those... It, you know, the probably one of the biggest underestimated RVs out there for sale are the Safaris. Um, they're aluminum siding, they're fiberglass roof. They have a, what they call a Magnum chassis, which they build them themselves. But a lot of times they they have the five leg Cummins and Air Ride and, and diesel generators. I mean, it just depends on how the customer ordered it. But uh, they're uh, you could get them cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. I mean, a really nice one. Uh, 97, 98 for under 20,000. That's cheap for a diesel pusher. Do you use park water for drinking or bottled water? Uh, I use I use the uh, the uh, shore water, I guess you'd call it, or the park water. I have a, a sediment filter and a chlorine and, and a, 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 like a drinking water filter right after that. So what happens is every drop of water that comes in, whether I'm filling it or whatever I'm doing, if I just have the hose turned on, it runs through a filter. And if I fill up my tank, it runs through a filter. It's every drop of water that comes into this RV runs through a sediment filter. And then when it comes out of the water tank, it either goes to the water pump or is pushed out by the water pressure. Then it runs through the chlorine and uh, regular like little water, you know, scrubber or whatever you want to call it. And then underneath the kitchen sink, we have a water purifier. So we drink, everything comes off the cold water that we drink. Our shower water goes through two filters. Everything goes through two filters and our drinking water goes through three and our water is always good pretty much even you you know you go to arizona and you fill up a bucket of water and you look at it you you wouldn't you even want to take it. a shower with it it's but you, yellow you fill you fill up a bucket of water from our it's shower yellow. and it's like well water oh it's really nice yeah. real clear the water in, in quartzite arizona has so many mineral deposits in it that our motorhome being black we've tried washing it before and it's it's a joke. It, there's white streaks all over it if you don't wash or wipe it off immediately. So thank yeah. God for uh, country bound microfiber quick dry towels. I see the sisters are fighting. <laughs> yes, I noticed that too. Old Pete, yeah, where is Old Pete? Is he He's here? There. Is he? Hockey's over. 
Oh, oh hockey's. Oh, okay. <laughs> no wonder they're talking hockey. Uh -huh. Pete, we work with a couple. Of, well, especially couple of, we work with yeah. a couple of Alyssa. Sisters. One of them is uh, she plays hockey. Yeah, she's uh, avidly. She's big into the hockey thing. So someday you be maybe watching her on TV. Oof, sad, laugh out loud. Boy, they're running it, aren't they? Anyway, yeah, we're. Uh, that's what we do for water. And uh, I actually filter the water like when I wash my truck today. I have one of those little blue filters like you get from uh, Walmart that you can just screw on the end, which isn't a great filter, but if you don't have any filter, you should have one, at least one of those. And uh, what kind, <laughs> I don't know, Steve, what, do you, what kind do you think that we drink? We drink eight o'clock. That's what we drink, and we have a percolator. You can see it right. There's a percolator right there, sitting on the sink. So at night, though, that they have a what is a great value uh, Walmart decaf yeah. that's 100% arabica. That's what we drink at night. It's really good. The the, the eight o'clock is better, but they don't eight o'clock doesn't. You can only get these little tiny bags, and they're like super expensive. So old Pete and Alexia are going at it about who's better. <laughs> yeah. Depends on the caps. How often do you recommend washing your coach when it's really dirty? The answer, yeah. Steve I, says. Uh, I probably sitting here. I probably I've washed it when we first pulled in. I haven't washed it since. I'll probably probably pretty soon I'll wash it again because. The thing about it is this thing looks beautiful when it's clean and it looks crappy when it's dirty. So, like I mean, anything. it's black, you know. It, 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 the left side looks terrible. The right side, we got our little cabana thing up. And, and uh, so you don't really see too much. Um, Frank Scandalito, RV SWAT, that guy put plywood down on yeah. the old wood. I didn't like that. I didn't either, and it made me wonder about any mold. That was a concern. Yeah, usually, I'll tell you the truth. Usually, when you when you do that re uh, redo on the roof, if the if the wood is if you can poke your head through it, then it's got to be completely replaced. It uh, what they should have done is they should have pulled that roof off and they should have left it open. Probably well, I mean, they about re they should have cut out the black pot spots yeah, too. it's just not as easy as you'd think. Yeah, Sometimes but it's, it's yeah. Well, it's not in a place where it's going to get to you. Man, and they should have, but they, a lot but of times. Okay uh, they can sell it and get something better. Too. A lot of times you could sand it. <laughs> Trade it in. Bill has nice hair. <laughs> yeah. That's like, you know, my brother always teases me because he's 6'5", and I'm, I'm like six foot. And he always <laughs> He always tells me, you know. You're 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 short. You're short. And I always tell him. Yeah, but read her he, next comment. He's too tall for his hair. It's like a porcupine. Thanks. <laughs> I know you're not coming back to work here. Not living. <laughs> he blow dries it. Yeah. Actually, I use bro cream on it. A little dabble do. Yeah, I don't use it when I'm wearing a hat, but yeah, normally I I just a little dab and rub it. That's it. Alyssa, you get to do all the dishes and the mopping. Yeah. <laughs> I I taught her how to mop. She didn't know how to mop. <laughs> do you miss California? We are going to be limited to 50 gallons of water per day. No, we don't. We miss our kids and miss the beach. I mean, there's parts of California that were wonderful, but they're not wonderful anymore. So why would you want to be there? I mean, where we're at today, we drove through some beautiful, beautiful country, and the people are really nice. And, and I mean, unfortunately, to say this, but we all speak the same language here in Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's this is a nice area. Uh, California has the beaches and the mountains and the deserts. and. You know, they have a really good weather and stuff, but they've destroyed that state. That it's just not worth it. It's not worth it for it's the hard weather. It's to live there. Yeah. I don't I don't think we could afford to move back there now. Yeah, yeah, we could. We could just live with Steve. Oh. <laughs> Cindy's there. Yeah. 
We haven't heard for Brian, but we've heard that he's up there working. That's all. That's all we've heard. So I'll hear from him. I, you know, we go sometimes we go six months without talking, and then we're together for a month or so. So that's it. <laughs> Everybody's like, let's see. Thanks, Steve. I can't read it. <laughs> yeah. Ted City, uh, we, well, I'll tell you what, we're, we're down there by, uh, we're down there by Carlsbad, we're actually in Carlsbad, California, by San Diego, and there's people living all around us there in tents, you know, sometimes not even in tents. It's, it's kind of crazy. It makes you a little uncomfortable. Do I rotate the tires on the coach? No, I don't. No, they're, uh, I have four aluminum wheels and I have two steel wheels. So in order to rotate them, and, and the thing about it is, is these tires are gonna die of old age before they they are wearing out. I carry a brand new tire yeah. that probably won't ever touch the ground in the back of my truck. And uh, you never know. You never know. I don't. I used to have a wheel wheel and tire, but the wheel was so dang heavy that it, with the tire and everything. I, well, you figure to to fix your flat, they're gonna have to take it off the rim anyway to fix the flat I mean ultimately right well what the, the idea was is that if we had a flat I could change it myself but yeah. we have we have good Sam if you don't have good Sam good it's Sam's a, worth it yeah they they'll the send price. a tire guy out and they'll dismount remount your tire they'll do the whole thing so makes a big difference and like I say I carry a brand new I, I run Toyos on this and I mean they've been on here what going on two years or almost two years old they don't even look like they've been on the ground but I the the secret is is when you're traveling you should check the tire pressure every week and when you're not traveling that every time you take off you need to check the tire pressure and uh, you, you can actually do it more than that because different temperatures different altitudes all that kind of stuff changes so um, you want to keep it pretty good Bill, I pulled the shocks off by 84 gold wing like you suggested last week. I'm going to try to find the seal kits for them. If I can't rebuild them, I, I will buy new adjustable air shocks. Yeah, or what you could do, if you could get that oil out of the out of there through the airline fitting, get us, you know, just try to fill up a cup, you know, with, the, with CC me, uh, measuring. And, and do both of them, and if they're the same, they just put the same amount of oil back in there, plus just a little tiny bit more, so that, like I say, you want the the those air shocks to hydraulically lock, so they don't bottom out, because that's what damages them. So if they hydraulically lock, you, you won't get all that clicking and banging and everything else. TPM. Okay, give me a hit. Our phone is about to die. We'll talk to you guys soon. Check out the new video. It has some tricky editing. All right, we will do. You, you already looked me. at it, did you? No, is that I the... put another one out today. Oh, okay. <clears throat> they don't. They get two days off a week, so. Yeah, they get all this free time, and we're always working. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, have a good TPM evening. TPM systems. TPM. Oh, tire pressure monitoring. Okay. I don't. I haven't seen it on here, but yeah, I don't have one. I have. Well, I do. It's a little gauge you put on there. It tells you what it is. Um, and when I stop, I have a hammer that I. I don't have it in here right now. But when we travel, I have a hammer that I keep right here by the door, and I walk out there and I just thump the inside and the outside of the rear duals. So you can tell if a front one's low, and uh, and uh, that way. Plus, uh, sometimes my stair sticks, and that works pretty good for wrapping the motor, and it, it comes right down. Look, it, these guys are still at it. They're probably in the same bedroom, even. Yeah. <laughs> Texting Good each place other. to text. <laughs> oh, it's okay, because it makes our tell comment speed go up. Black and blue, see, our, that's my colors. And... That's, this is all he lets me wear is black. <laughs> Just kidding. You can 
Spin yeah. hammers like you two yeah. scissors. <laughs> I'll give you a hammer when you come in. Oh man. We are in separate rooms. In case you guys don't know, we work with Alexia and Alyssa and their sisters. We and work. They watch. They watch us. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. No, we they just work. like to tease Alyssa. She likes to keep the stool from coming up off the ground, but well, we she's got a that good mopper animal. now. Yeah. I got her mopping. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Any, any more RV? We don't have as many people tonight. We only have 24, huh? What did we yeah. have last week? Like 32 or something. Are you guys getting bored with these uh, Wednesday night chats? We, so one of the things that we've been talking about is we want to paint the inside of our RV and do something about the window coverings. And then I think we're going to put a, a new backsplash on. Yeah, we're going to... We're... Get rid of the, the 80s disco mirrors. If you can see them behind Bill's head... I don't think mm -hmm. they can't. We know. Yeah. Anyway. No, it's not me. I'm not. Well, you can see it right there. See that? It's like mirrors. It looks. Beveled there's edges. the coffee pot. It looks like the coffee pot, but it's a <laughs> chrome mirror, beveled edge. So. <laughs> um. Whoa! What happened? It's okay. It's anyway, slick. uh. We're gonna. We're. I'm thinking about painting light gray. The walls and, and our valances and everything are dark gray with uh, burgundy stripes. Darling wanted that color. I would have probably gone for the blue, but that's okay. We're we're good with it in here. So what we're gonna do is I I'd either like to to dye the shades. The oh, uh, Alexia is staying and Alyssa's going. Bye, Alyssa. Bye. <laughs> and Makio says she's not bored. Pooh Bear wants to know, do you give me pocket money? No. She, she, <laughs> she, I buy her everything she wants. She don't need any money. Who, can we vote for the colors you're going to do? No. No. No, I enjoy them all, a lot. I don't get a vote in that either. Yeah, this is definitely, this is a dictatorship in this RV. I had a leak on the inner dual, 10 pounds per day, removed the valve extensions and it's slow. And I had to get a special deal to fill the inners. Um, but I think when I'm traveling, I haven't lost, it, it, it fluctuates, it goes up and down, but they all go up and down. So I just kind of go, okay, everything's going up and down, so that's what it is. So I always just try to level it back off where I like it. I've been running the front uh, tires a little softer than the back, and because uh, most of the weight's on the back. But uh, it, when it sits for months, if it's sitting here for months, it could get a little weird. It could, it, they, I could lose five or ten. I've actually had them, like when we get to Arizona, it happens every year. When it, as it gets warmer, the tire pressure, I go to put it on there, it's like over what I would fill it. So this is not late. Meaty. Ruth, Ruth says she enjoys these two. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys like them. Blue, he likes blue. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, old Pete said, what do you think about warranties? If you can get one on a used RV, worth it or not? You know, um, I won't have one. And the only reason why I say I won't have one is because uh, I fix it myself. I mean, if I had to rebuild the engine on this, if I had to do an in frame, I would have to do that, I guess. That's just the way it works. But um, if you if you don't have the ability to do that, then my suggestion would be to get a warranty, but really, really read it. Because a lot of times, they cover only inter internal lubricated parts. out or something they don't cover it uh, you know 90 percent of what goes wrong with these like alternators i carry a spare alternator and i last year i had to replace three because i, I got kind of messed up on them but uh the uh the thing is is it's it's a little bit hard to change but i could do it in about 20 minutes so it's not that big a deal let's see can i fill your camper with balloons no come on Alyssa. Lost the connections. Thumbs up on Wednesday night chat. Thanks. Good night.
RTs are way too expensive for older RVs. Yeah, they they get you pretty hard on them. And then, like I say, when you read what it, you know, what it says down below, it usually means that uh, they don't cover anything. Yeah, they have all these tricky little words. And the dealers, the what the big secret is, is the dealers don't tell you is, is you're paid six thousand dollars for a service warranty that they're paid eight hundred dollars for. And then they want you to finance that. So by, by the time you get done, you're paying an astronomical amount of money for a service warranty that doesn't cover anything. So that's where you got to be real careful. I mean, when you buy a brand new one, they come with like a, a one or two year warranty. And another secret that the dealers never tell you is there's no limit law on RVs. If, something, if, if you have something that just constantly gives you a problem, like when the aqua hots first came out all these people were trying to take their motorhomes and drop them back off and pick, get their money back well they they don't, didn't have that privilege because there was no limit law on them so i've actually advised attorneys on how to go about at least getting the rigs fixed and taking it where the customers aren't the ones that are dropping them off the rv gets a sun bath and then they get it back and the problem's not repaired so there's a trick to that too i mean you gotta You've got to work with the factory and you got to say, look, here's the deal. I know you're not going to take this rig back, but I'm just going to park it out in front of your, your factory with a big sign on the side that says this thing's a piece of junk. And they don't want that. They don't want any negative publicity, especially now with like Facebook and stuff like that. You can really hurt companies. Look at Starbucks. I mean, you you know, one little thing and it, it, it can ruin their business. So same way with these. So what I always suggest is, is you try to work with them, but you've got to be, you got to be a little bit nice, but you got to be really firm and, and let them tell them you're going to get somebody to inspect it before it goes to them and somebody to inspect it when it comes back. And if it's not fixed, it's going to stay and that you're going to rent a motor home so you could take the trips that you were, that you paid to buy yours with. And when you start putting all these things on them, they start getting real nervous. And then what they do is they just say, okay, let's get this squeaky wheel. Let's get it squeaky. And be nice. I mean, you don't have to like pull have to be the big firm. guns and, and cuss them out. That's one thing that, that that will get you booted out of a dealership faster than anything. It really will. Rick, is a, is the video better now? I, I mean, I see it's a little, that's another reason why we're gonna change over to the other camera, then that way we don't have three things running. We only have one thing running. So we're working on that. What is the most troublesome system on our, or appliance on your RV? Well, I'll tell you what I've been doing battle with is I've been doing battle with the, uh, the water heater. I changed all the sensors we went to an rv store and we bought the propane sensors and we bought the electric sensors and the uh i wasn't real happy with electrical sensors they didn't seem like they're the right ones so the guy insisted they were i put them in and they lasted about i don't know what two or three months and yeah. they just smoked all the wiring and everything it got really hot so i got now i got uh AC electrical right, sensors and you know it's got an ECO which is emergency cutoff and then it's got the thermostat that controls the, the temperature so that's all that's working good but my the little heat rod that goes yeah, actually no. inside is not real good yeah, so no. no anode is no. what keeps the electrolysis in the water tank from eating your your uh, your water tank up the uh, the newer ones now they don't require that but old ones like this they need the anode rod so and those say i've been getting the little ones with the drain valve because that's all i've been able to find i found these really nice ones hopefully it's the right size but uh yeah it's big and it, it'll last i had one of those before it lasted like two and a half years so hi guys hi chris hello from turkey Woo! oh wow turkey, turkey. awesome Hi. Hi. I didn't. I didn't know they RV'd in turkeys. I guess in Turkey. I guess they do. I wonder. Do they have RVs in Turkey? I don't know. How long can you safely run a generator? 
Well, I'll tell you what, I actually had this one one time cut off. It does, they have a an actual circuit breaker on them. The hardest thing is running two ACs, I would think. Um, uh, actually, Darla can pop the... <laughs> <laughs> can pop the circuit breaker. I, I hate to tell you how many times I've had to go outside and flip the switch, reset it. But um, that even happened in the house, though. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it was always a blow dryer. I think with these diesel generators, you know, if they're running good, I've I've ran ours for hours and hours, running the airs, and uh, I don't know. I I. I've never had a problem other than that one time when we were in Dallas, Texas, and it was really hot. It was really humid. There was a bunch of people coming in and out of the motorhome, so it never really got a chance for the ACs to cycle or anything. Ran, so it ran. was just, it was just constantly, everything was running. And, um, um, but, you know, this is a 7.5 kW Odin with a Kubota motor, but it seems to, to work really good. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of propane generators. If you have a gas, the only way I would have a propane generator probably would be if I had a uh, like a fifth wheel um, and it was on board. Uh, uh, as far as if I had a Class C, I'd have a gas generator. If I had a, a you know Class A, I want a diesel. That's why I say there's some of those uh, some of the Dutch stars will actually. For a while there, they were putting some uh, propane generators on. Um, Lynn and, and Joe went, looked at a Rexall before they bought the Holiday Rambler, and it didn't have dual pane windows. It had a 30 amp service, so you could only run one air at a time. It had a, a propane generator on a diesel. It had a Spartan chassis, but it had a low end. It had a. Uh, it was a pretty heavy motorhome for a 5.9 Cummins. It was only 230 horsepower, I think, and it was pretty good size with us. And the, I, another thing I don't like is I don't like the slide outs where the cabinets, the uh, cargo bays come out with them. Because when those things come out, then the bottom of your floor is exposed. And the cold yeah, air yeah, gets you get in, a lot of cold, hot it keeps, air gets in. Yeah, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a lot better when you just, you open a covered door it's, and you shut it. It's nice because you don't smack your head on the slide out when you're in the cargo bays, but it's not so nice for keeping the temperature the way you want inside your rig. Does our does our camper have seat belts? Yes, Alyssa. Of course it does. I even have them in my my chair here. I have. So seat the passenger seat does, the driver seat does, this one that he's sitting in does, and then the couch does too. Yeah. Yes. But we, I have them all stuffed down. It's we only us stuff. ever riding in it. So. Yeah. Let's see, when you first started, did you start work camping right away or did you take a vacation first? We left California and we went to South Dakota to get our vehicles registered, get our licenses, and then we went to um, Kansas. We went to Kansas, to Coffeeville, Kansas to work for Amazon. So yeah, we started work camping right away. Hence the economic refugees. We had a motorcycle shop, I, I don't know, you know, if you know, you but know I'm sure story. most people do. We had a motorcycle shop for years, and towards the end, it got to where we just, we were, I was doing stupid stuff like putting tires on guys that have been customers for years, bikes, and giving them to them, and throttle cables, and oil change, just giving well, them. Well, that's because, because people were hurting. People were hurting, and we really did think that it was just kind of like a recession and that it would bounce back. We were self-employed for over 30 years. We've we've, we've had quite a few lots companies. Of we went through a lot of and every time we went through a recession with our other businesses, most of them, we were we were buying. We would people would bring. I would I always had cash. I would buy motorcycles and guitars and whatever you know, people guns or whatever. And uh, then when the recession was over, I'd sell it and make money on everything. Well, this time we went. 2010, we were October of 2010 is when we closed, uh, and the re the recession just the recession to me I think is still going on. I, I you know I don't think really wages for the average person hasn't come up, and for somebody like me that I my businesses were mostly like service oriented. I worked on motorcycles. We had detail shops. 
we did have electronics company uh that was not tied to you know anything to do with the economy pretty much other than it was good because we sold real inexpensive electronics um so we were able to make money during bad times but with the motorcycle thing i mean a lot of guys they'd let their houses go before their ha their motorcycles yeah, so it was weird true. i had customers come in and say yeah I'm, we're moving to a rental house and i'm i need to get this piece of chrome put on my motorcycle right away you know it's like oh dude <laughs> you got four kids but they just california was bad we're in the housing market i mean you spend if you, you spend six hundred thousand dollars for a house and then the next day it's worth ninety thousand, well, <laughs> what's the point? Is it wise to start with making an older rig mechanically sound before remodeling the interior? Well, yeah, you you always want the the thing is is I always I've always advised people that when it comes to RVs, it's motor trans chassis, all the running order and you know tires and stuff like that you want to make sure you're you're up to speed there because doing cosmetic stuff you know i mean this really the average person's going to walk in here they're going to say wow this is really nice but we've lived in it for eight years and we kind of want to make it nicer so i mean a lot of things we'll still keep the pictures over there and there's things we wanted to do that is to this from the beginning and we did a lot of it but there's still stuff on that list that hasn't gotten in yet. I hate those mirrors. Yeah, and I, I told her the other day, let's. she could pick that out as long as they're white, gray, black, and clear. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would uh, I would definitely do the uh, the mechanics. And what was, what was so cool is I have a friend of mine, he's been a truck driver for over 30 years, and when he bought this thing, he goes, well, I want to come by and see it. And he went. He came and put his overalls on, went underneath it, and he went over to the truck place and came back with new filters and all. And he completely services this thing. I helped him. We pulled the wheels off of it. When I got all done, he wouldn't even let me pay for the parts. He goes, "No, you've done stuff for me in the past. I want to. I want to. I just want to give you this." And so that was a big head start for me. And then when whenever I had a problem. He would kind of, if you know, like adjusting the brakes, certain things like that, I, I wasn't really aware of. I mean, um, I had a lot of knowledge about a lot of it, but not all of it, that's for sure. I'm still learning stuff. You you know, when you stop learning, that's usually because you're not breathing anymore. So how do you find a good repair shop for motorhome maintenance? Uh, well, I'll tell you the best way to find it is find somebody who found a place that's good probably word of mouth is the best thing the uh a friend of mine bought a year older holiday rambler than this one and it was leaking oil it wasn't running right and we were on the road so he took it to a shop in hesperia california where we we're originally from and they, they said oh yeah you need a twelve thousand dollar engine and i told him i said well don't do anything till i get there let me check it out so we got there we started checking it over and I mean, I started, it's all mechanical. I just started messing with it. Got it fired up, it's running good. It's got the same oil leak I had and we need to do his too, but uh, that's it. There's nothing wrong with the motor. Motor's fine. Motor runs good, it pulls good. It, it doesn't make any noises, strange noises or anything. It's just leaking oil. And it was, someone had got in there and played with the injector pump and stuff, adjusting the idle mix or idle speed stuff. Well, I just went back in there and readjusted it. We, it was getting low voltage. He had some bad cables, and so he just kind of fixed everything. It's running good. But because of all that, he got a really killer deal on it. He got a he got a really nice motor for ten grand. Yeah, I mean, really. With nice. a really nice custom paint job, and he's got some work to do. He owns a upholstery shop. He's who did all the upholstery in here for us. Yeah, he did my chair and, and stuff, yeah. but uh, but he's he's living in it, so. I don't know. He's done some stuff, I guess. We'll we'll see. We we see him once a year. We go well for a couple of weeks. We usually see him. So, well, we're dropping people. We're down to seventeen. See, people are getting bored with us, huh? The ones that are leaving and the ones that aren't are saying, "No, I love it," and that's what we're here for, right? Yep. 
If you I guys want have that questions, guy. we have answers. We can help. Yeah. That's what we like. Like I say, the main reason why we're doing these until we have two days off, it's it's really it's, hard for yeah. us to do videos because I mean the videos are going to be <laughs> us cooking pizzas and scooping <laughs> ice cream. Scooping I, ice cream. You think this is boring? <laughs> That'd be like pulling teeth. <laughs> so. Although I must say that some of the outfits that they're wearing at the pool, they're quite. Yeah, and there's a lot of women that should something. be wearing them. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> Ask Alyssa and the, 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 the Alexia. Alexia. Hey, boy, they see it all the time. Yeah. We're inside. We just kind of ignore it. I know. I saw those. Alexia says. Yeah. <laughs> Franklin's not bored. Terry's not bored. Okay. We'll get shoot a question. If you got anything, let's see. What else can I talk about? Uh, on these diesel pushers, on these older ones like this one, another thing you have to do is you have to uh, adjust the brakes. <laughs> Terry says, but I have no life. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. That's, that, that's how our channel survives. People with no life, see? Thanks, Alexia. She's not bored either. I'm sure Alyssa is. What things annoy each of you? Well, she annoys me and I annoy her. Yeah, <laughs> there'd be a shorter list of things that, that don't annoy each of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you that usually the biggest problem with like this type, this lifestyle is going to be your neighbors. You know, um, for the most part, we haven't really had too many problems, but our first experience when we went to... Uh, to Amazon there in Kansas, I got hurt. My my knee got I blew my knee up, so I was in this chair for the remainder of the time. And she was working, and this guy next to me was bringing her home. And one night he left her. I mean, five o'clock well, in the morning. Well, he and just, his wife. Yeah. I was right. I mean, we worked right across the street. Well, I thought it was right across the street. It ended up being I don't know how far away do you think that was? Quarter of a mile. Oh, across the street, yeah. wasn't that far. But the bad thing about it was it was dark and it, it was, was big ditches. We were working the night shift, 12 hours, and it was freezing cold in December. And he left me. He just, his wife went home early with somebody because she couldn't work the whole shift or whatever. She did that a lot. And I was supposed to pick a ride with, take a ride with him back across the street. And I ended up having to walk and it was spooky scary i mean and i couldn't walk at all yeah. otherwise i would have went over there and punched that guy right in the <laughs> face so i found a ride with someone else for the duration but you know there's this lifestyle is no different than if you live in a neighborhood you know you can have the neighbor next door and you guys just love each other and, and do things together and you get a camper they get a camper and then there's people next door where they kill your dogs and stuff. I mean, you, you could you could go through the same same stuff here. So, what would be uh -oh. the first things to do maintenance um, before trying to start up a 95 HR Imperial that's been sitting for six to eight months without having been moved from outside uh, open cover? Make sure there's oil in it. Pull the cap off the coolant recovery, and if it's empty, then you gotta you gotta crack the radiator and. Uh, and where was it sitting? Like what state? I'd like to, I'd like, Ken, I'd like to see a picture of that. That's uh, 95 Imperial, that's what we have. I love mm -hmm. them. You know, there's like three floor plans. There's a side walkway and there's uh, there's uh, a front, I don't know if they have a front door on that one though. Maybe Honey, not. I need some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Terry says, I signed up for yeah. Oh wait, Alexia says she annoys both of us only sometimes, honey. Only sometimes. No, now Franklin, are are you are you, are you on our uh, Facebook or you're the one that doesn't do Facebook? Oh, we've been yard. Huh? I'm reading what he wrote, and Terry said I signed up for Amazon and he yeah. and now he has to find it. That's what I'm asking. Terry, are you are you a, a he Terry or a she Terry? I keep saying he, and maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I've talked to Ken. Yeah. We've talked on the phone. Okay. Franklin's on. So I put on... Okay, Terry's a guy. 
Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, I put on a deal of the day on there, and like I've told you guys before, if you if you find something or if you're looking for something, and you want to talk to me, I'm willing to do that. I will uh, take the time to talk. I mean. You know, we could talk on the phone. I'll try to help you as much as I can. We could always uh, email or text, email or, text whatever. or whatever. So, yeah, I'd be willing to help you with that. Um, save color as yours when you purchase. Yeah. Yeah, that it, with the A3. Yeah, it's uh, Kentucky. I would, you know, I wouldn't worry too much other than, like I say, pull the dipstick. My uh, Someday I've got a film me pulling the dipstick out of this thing, you'd be blown away that my oil's got like 4,000 miles on it, it's still green. This thing has the tightest rings and top end. And I'm sure if I took it to that shop with an oil leak, they'd tell me I needed a new motor. But yeah. this thing just is really, really tight. And I was real nervous when we were losing a gallon of oil every 30 miles. So, I mean, we just kept hitting the Walmarts and buying gallon eight nine gallons of <laughs> that oil was an expensive time. trip in oil yeah but you know the cheap. truck our truck has not had a squeak in it since <laughs> <laughs> that thing got up from, from the roof to the <laughs> to the ground oiled she was definitely oiled up she had such a shiny paint job too all the chrome was sparkly it was great okay Smell. so terry's on the waiting list for beats mm -hmm. in grand forks yeah that's uh yeah, you want to get on my shift. Tell them, see if you get on the day shift this year. And I'll see, you know, if you have, if you have, uh, if you don't operate a skitster or something, or, you know, when you get there, we'll just try to get you a good job. You know, you make money no matter what. The crappiest job, you still make good Terry, money. If, if you had a motor home, you could come here, or an RV, you could come here and work too. We're still looking for people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me say one more thing to Ken. Yeah, if you go and look at that motorhome, I don't know if you've gone and looked at it, but if you go and look at it, then when you're there, you know, like I say, just check the fluids and just go in there and crank it up. And that's what I did with this one. It fired right up. These things, they, these mechanical, they're like a Harley. When they're set up right, you turn the key and push the button, they fire right up. Uh, but they don't start right away. There's something wrong with them. Let's see. Yeah, so you got the. Is it is it a side aisle or is it a walk through bathroom? Or work camper news. You're you're waiting for a call from work camper news. You should, what on the East Grand Forks? You should have contacted Al Sorensen Express Employment in. Uh, for sugar beets. In Grand Forks, North Dakota. That's who you want to con contact. Al Sorensen, Express Employment, Grand Forks, North Dakota. And tell him that you know me and uh, that you want to get on his list because he's the one. He says yes, that's his name. Okay, that's who you talk to? All right, because he's the one. Our, our ship fills up fast. So, um, and once you go to another yard, then they always feel, well, you know, we kind of need you there because they want to get people to go to these outside yards because once you go to our yard, you're not going to want to go anywhere else. You'd be, be better off skipping a year <laughs> and then coming the next year instead of being 70 miles from, a, you know, any kind of a grocery store living in a dirt field. Let's see here. I thought you'd need couples. Well, here we don't... Actually, he would hire a single right now. <laughs> have you been, have you been to the Harley Museum on the Wild Walk? I have, yep. I think We've we did to... that two or three years ago. Yeah, that was... <laughs> okay, I'm not saying this, but we were driving down the road, and we were doing about 50 miles an hour. There was two bald eagles sitting on the side of the road, or whatever eagles they are. And a school bus was coming the other way, and it startled them. And the one almost got hit by the school bus. And as we got up there, and I had my foot on the brake, it flew right into the bumper and underneath. And we ran over with the dualies. That was a bad day. There were literally feathers everywhere inside the cargo bays. I That's like Milwaukee though. They were. And we Sad. parked in their little what? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. We had 
feathers everywhere. It was disgusting. And uh, but we when we went to the museum, we parked across the street from the factory, and they had a little spot where we parked. They told us you could park there, and we parked. And spent a bunch of time. Yeah, I got pictures of it. I love it. Have you ever been? See, I think this era of time since 2008 is only compared to the 1930s, where people going nomadic, people leaving their homes, yeah. staking, or striking out for something else. You're the right, you're right about recession, not over. Yeah, well, the thing, the thing about it is the recession's over for the millionaires and the billionaires. And being a small businessman, you know, the bad part about it is, is there's the, the the big guys and the government and all that. They all work together, and they're they're always constantly. When, when things got bad in California, when we opened, when we moved into our our new building, and we did everything in the building, I couldn't even get the fire department to come and do an inspection for me, so I could open the doors, and I was paying over nine hundred dollars a a year for fire suppression. So I had one of my customers that was a captain for the county. They said, well, I could do it for you. So he did it, so we were able to open the doors. But as soon as the recession got real bad, we had the Bureau of Automotive Repair, we had the city and the county and the state and the fire department. Everybody was coming in there and writing us up for everything and trying to just suck what little they could out of us. And I, I just, I, I told Darla, I just said, I've had it. You know, I mean, I, we, every time we get to the point where we're making good money and life is cruising for us, then the government comes in or something to that effect. You just got to be, you just got to be so loaded with dough to be able to survive. And like I say, if we still had that shop right now, there were nine shops. I was a, there was a Harley dealer or me, and then there were eight more shops opened up because every, I made it look so easy, I guess. And then the next thing you know, there was down to the Harley dealer, two highway patrolmen that were getting over hundred grand from the state of California. That's why they needed my money Pensions. and us, everybody else had closed. And uh, of course, when we, they found out we were closing the shop, one of the guys, one of the highway patrolmen came over and said, well, who's gonna fix the bikes? We, we can't do the stuff that you do. I said, well, I guess you've been, it's time for you to learn. They're right. not in business anymore. Yeah, they, they were, we left, they were gone few months later and we actually sold part of our business to a couple of guys and they lasted about six months it's it's not the business it's on that type of thing and, the, and there were there were people we put it up for sale people were saying well the, the thing is is it's you 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 you're the one who knows how to fix the bikes we need someone that knows how to fix bikes and so we would have been just stuck there and I didn't want to do that so let's see yeah, side doors just seen from outside have not been inside yet. Also, our 99 Gold Wing 15 are fired up every time. Not sure about those other motorcycles. Yeah, well, he's just seen the motorhome for you. Just seen the motorhome for the outside, not inside yet. Yeah, well. Motor, you know, you need to just check it out real close. Look under Franklin, it, see if it leaks. Where are you? What state? I know you said the motorhome's in Kentucky. What state are you in? And, okay, he's, I'm a bit edgy about pulling a toad with the motorhome. Any suggestions? Well, I have a lot of suggestions on it. Um, first of all, you want to get a Roadmaster quiet hitch so that your, your receiver, the actual hitch is it wobbling around inside that receiver. That'll get rid of a lot of the, this crazy stuff in the steering wheel. Um, I prefer towing four down, having four wheels on the ground, as opposed to a, uh, dolly. a dolly. But if you got a front wheel drive car, that's the only way you're going to pull it. Um, what, kind the, of, what kind of car do you have? Oh, he's in Sleeger, Wisconsin. Must be someone else. Anyway, uh, I thought the motorhome was in Kentucky. Isn't that what he said? No, that's Ken. that's Cad. Okay. Yeah. The. Uh, okay. My daughter. Ken. My daughter uh, was pulling her car on a dolly, and then we helped a seventy-year-old lady get all all hooked up with yeah. Jeanette. 
Got her all hooked up, and she's towed a dolly with a, a little key or something behind it. She was it. petrified. She was petrified, but... She's got a C-class, though. Yeah, I kind of... Her problem is, is she forgets to pull the pin and backs off, and so we actually wrote her a list of things to do, and we just like, numbered them and pilots said... Pilots do that. Yeah. Why, you know... Yeah, checklist. Exactly. And we, when, we, when we used to uh, first take... When we were first taking off with this thing, we were making a checklist because we were forgetting the stupidest stuff. So... <laughs> Now we've got it down after as long as we've been doing it. I mean, you know, I could I could tell you everything that needs to be done. C Max towable for a Ford C Max. What's a C is that like a pickup truck or something? Hmm. Okay, Ken's motorhome, it's in the same city. Right. Do you know what how much they want for that ninety five, Ken? A hybrid so it's a front-wheel drive probably so you're gonna have to tow the dolly um, you know I mean there. yeah you're gonna have to tow it with a dolly just you just got to make sure that you know you get the small dolly don't get the big dolly if you get a big dolly you'll be tearing the front end and all the all the graphics off you know all the stuff off the front of the car and the back will sit too low and everything else there's or a point max to towable four down Oh, it is. That's what he says. That's that. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, if it's towable four down, then all you have to do is get a, a base plate, and uh, your tow bar. And I honestly, I would suggest Roadmaster. <laughs> we have a uh, Blue Ox, but we don't like it. Well, it we just don't like it. I have to rebuild it every year. <laughs> you know, I'm constantly spending spending money. Yeah. Well. Check into the, because a lot of times, is it automatic or standard shift? Probably hybrids are going to be a electric motor. If you get some pictures and uh, send them to me, and then you, you, you want to get underneath that rear hood, look in there and, and shine a light. In. Best time, sneak over there at night and shine a light underneath there and in between the duels and check the tires and stuff like that. And then go back during the day if you can. Because I'll tell you what, you'll see a lot more at night with a flashlight than you will during the day. Because it's dark when you get underneath there. And, if, well, you know, if you go over there when it's dark with a flashlight, just you'll see everything real nice. Yeah, I'm excited. Wow, found a 95 Holiday Rambler, man. Yeah. That's a Harley Davidson. So, you said you, you've had gold wings and everything. Now you have a Harley. <laughs> That's how I always tell people, I go, yeah, I still have a Harley. It just has a lot more lug nuts than the last one. How much more expensive is Roadmaster than Blue Ox? <clears throat> how much more expensive is Roadmaster than Blue Ox? It's not. In fact, uh, I think Roadmaster might actually be a little less. And uh, they just don't have, they don't have the uh, dependability problems. Like I say, we... Every year when we go to courtside, they have to pull the thing out, take it over, drop it off, and have them rebuild it. So it's it's the the Venti. Is that what it is? Vent? Uh, uh, vent. It's a Avante. ten thousand pound Avante. Avante. Ten thousand pound um, tow bar. And my truck weighs fifty six hundred. And like I say, the Roadmaster Quiet Hitch thing got rid of a lot of this. You know, that truck you you have just a little tiny bit of movement in that that blue ox, just that much. Well, you figure you extend that out 20 feet by the time you get to the back of the truck, that thing would walk around. I mean, it walked that far over. And, and it burns your tires. Yeah, and, it, and it's hard on your tires. And, really And hard. the truck keeps, you, you adjust the steering wheel, and then the truck walks to the other side. And you adjust the steering wheel, and just, it just keeps walking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And uh, it just constantly... When you're driving down the road, you can't look at anything because you got to keep keep an eyeball that you're not driving off the road. Yeah. Contacted the owner today, and we'll discuss when we get together. Yeah. Well, it's exciting. I wish I was there. I wish I was in Kentucky. <laughs> I love buying motorhomes. I like I like he buying likes them. Spending and... other people's money as yeah. he always says. I'm out of money, so I got to spend <laughs> other people's money. <laughs> 
No, I'm not out of money. <clears throat> That's one thing about it. If you've got a house and you've got utilities and you got car payments, you got all that stuff, and you pay cash for a motorhome, get your, you know, sell your house, pay, pay everything off, and get out, you'll save money. You, you'll save money. It's our biggest, our biggest expenses are, are, our diesel fuel, and eating out. I mean, those are in our insurance and stuff like that. But you, you're gonna, you gotta have that medical insurance and all that stuff anyway. So, and we're actually, Darla's getting Social Security, and I'm about to start getting mine. Because he's just little. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm she's old. my old lady <laughs> till August, and she's not so old anymore. But, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we'll be getting that. So that's going to, people could go to Adventureland and like it. I'm not, you know, it's, I guess it depends on where you're at, because where, where we were at, both of us had the same kind of experience, and we were just happy to get out of there. And they, if go you're going to work at Adventureland, they say rides is, most everybody agrees rides is the least stress, baloney, garbage, whatever. But you still, I mean, you have to deal with, with kids puking on rides. That's not fun. Um, and the heat, because you're out all day long in the heat. And... Um, it's less hours so if yeah. you're counting on the hours you're only getting six hours a day at the most so whereas if you were like what we were doing we were there 10 and 12 hours a day yeah <laughs> so uh franklin the dealer we bought the motorhome from wants 4300 for the blue ox so the brake buddy right well you get a thousand well is it a brake buddy or a patriot? Because a brake buddy, buddy is, the patriot is the blue ox. The difference between the patriot and the blue ox is, is the blue ox has an air compressor. The patriot is an electric motor. I, I kind of like the um, the patriot better. Um, the thing the thing is is that you got to make sure you run a charge wire to your car battery. So that they, they told me, oh, you don't have to have that. Then every time we got ready to start the truck, it was dead. So I just ran a charge wire. It's not that big a deal. You could, I mean, if you're mechanical at all, That's you just have to take all that, you know, that rubber stuff off the front of the car and put the base plate in there. That's the worst part is the base plate. The, the hitch itself isn't that bad. A good place, I'll tell you where we bought our hitch from, is we went to an RV show and they have show discounts. Or if you were anywhere near Quartzsite, Arizona, during the rally, that's a In great January. place. They're all there. Yeah, <laughs> you can all buy there. all that stuff real cheap. Now, a lot of people, they have their spouse or whatever follow around, you know, in the motorhome. But, you know, they do, of course, it's a hybrid, so it wouldn't cost you too much. You could do it for a while until you got Somewhere to... Somewhere where you could get to a show yeah, and buy it, right. buy it at the show price. He says it's a break, buddy. Yeah. Found Hannah Trailer Supply in Oak Creek, Wisconsin wants 3400 And then Daniel Terrell, 1977, says, what's the name of that hitch? Sorry, just got here. Well, we're talking about Blue Hawk, Blue Ox, and also Roadmaster. I have I originally bought, well, I have a Blue a Blue Ox, and I, I went on the forums, and people weren't saying too much negative about them. And... Uh, and then when I got mine, man, it just, like I say, it, it, and we have people here that have blue ox hitches, and they're, they're not aware that you have to rebuild them. And I go over there, and they're just like, you know, I go, Lucy man, that's not good, you know. And, and we were we were in uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico one time, and this guy kept walking up to us, and we were talking to him. And he goes, yeah, yesterday my, my blue ox hitch broke, and my, luckily my, mm -hmm. they were pulling, he was pulling a small truck, and it went over, but it, it didn't hit anything. It didn't destroy the truck. It came up right next to them and then veered off the road and hit, yeah. a, hit a dirt bank. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that would have felt like. <laughs> yeah. As far as uh, brake systems, um, my opinion is, is if you have a, a uh, diesel motorhome, you're not going to even know it's working. You won't know any. The brakes could be locked up. You wouldn't know whether they're working or not, or they could be not working. I mean, we drove around for what three or three years with ours not working because every time you hit the brakes one time, it, it kicked off. It had a bad board in it or something. 
And they finally, of course, they charged me money, but they gave me a new one is what they ended up. They told me there was nothing wrong, wrong with, with it. it. Set it back, and I had marked it so I knew which way, whether it was mine or not. They set it back, and they sent me a whole new one. They said, well, there was nothing wrong with it. And I go, yeah. And they charged me $110. They said they put a battery in it. But it was a whole brand new system, so they were just kind of covering it. Because I told them, I said, I'm just going to keep driving around the country until I get it erect, and then we'll just change the name of Blue Ox to my name. And they didn't like that. So. Uh, uh, Good night. Hi, Mikhail. Good Mikhail. Set pictures. Cool. Okay. Let's see. Oh, so, so you got a Class C with a V10, and you got that. that you got that car. So you, yeah, you should have no problem towing it. That V10's pretty, pretty strong, pretty stout motor. What, what your Class C? What brand? Oh, I was going to say, the. Uh, I like the little drop-ins, because you don't have to. You don't have to do anything, really, to the inside of the car. Some of those brake systems you're tapping into the master cylinder. Some of them you got to run cables and different stuff. I just like the one just hooks over the, the brake pedal. You just set it in there and turn it on. It's not that big a deal. Twenty eighteen Jayco. Wow, you got a brand new one. So you got a Thor, twenty eighteen Thor. <laughs> Jayco's owned by Thor. Uh, I like the Jayco, but uh, you just got to be careful with dealing with the warranty with the Thors. Are you going full time, Franklin? It's not fast, huh? Ooh, ooh. No. Okay. Oh, you just, oh, you're going to be a part time. Well, you I thought you were going to uh, try to go to Sugar Beets. No, that was. Uh... Was it Ken? No, it wasn't Ken. It was Terry. It was it Terry? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, if you're not going full time, you know, I would still. Not me. Yeah, uh, you know what? I probably, there was a time I probably wouldn't have, I didn't even like motorhomes. Well, are I mean, you going to go part-time, or, or is this just like a, a weekend or a couple of weeks vacation kind of a setup? Too much like work? <laughs> what is your plan? Got to keep talking here. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to think we're dead. Well, like I say, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. You know where you want to be. You know, a lot of people, th this is a different lifestyle. In the beginning, there's a lot of frustration with it because, like I say, when we first took off, anytime anything went wrong with the motorhome, it was Darla's fault. And uh, we're uh, we're beyond that now. I don't I don't go there. Going to tour, okay. Oh, someone wants to know. This chat is about being a full-time RVer. Are you interested? We're talking about different different motor homes, different motors. And how to be a full-time RVer. That's yes. what we're chatting about. Anyway. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> our our name, you. Economic Refugee, kind of throws people a little bit. We've talked <laughs> about possibly changing it, but... The thing, the thing is, is to us, I mean, that's kind of what we tagged ourselves as because we did, when we closed our business and everything, we, we kind of left town with our tail between our legs. We weren't, we, we weren't uh, in the greatest shape. We, we had to sell all of our personal belongings that we've had for years and years and years. And we had to sell our children and everything else to, <laughs> to get money to do this. Nah, not really. You don't believe that. But, you know. Awesome. Um, for me, there's so much less stress. I mean, so much less stress. I mean, when we had businesses, and you could ask Darla, I used to come home at the end of the, especially when we had employees and business was slow or whatever, and, and everybody else got a paycheck and they all went and cashed their checks and they all went to the store and did Christmas and everything else. And I come home and have to explain to Darla why we weren't going to get to do too much, you know, and, uh, that's what's nice now. I know how much money I'm going to make working here. And, and, you know, of course, we're kind of actually working more than we planned on. But 
Things will change. Well, but see, Franklin, that's us too. We want we want a, a base to land in an area where it's nice to be when it's not nice to be somewhere else. It would be great to have hookups. We actually have some plans. We just have to find the right place. Yeah. Um, Pooh Bear, there's no divorce. We got that. We've been married. <laughs> what? We're going to be married 37 years here pretty quick, huh? Mm -hmm. So I think we made it over the hump. Anyway, uh, yeah, you could, there's places down in Arizona and stuff where you could buy, but I don't know why you'd even want to do that. I mean, we pay $215 a month in Quartzsite, and then we go over by Phoenix, and we pay, like, of course, we got to pay electricity, which is about 35 or 40 bucks a month. So say 250, and then we go over by Phoenix. We stay in another place that's about 250 a month. Can't rent a house for that. And then now we're here. We're just doing, you know, we're working. There's a lot of jobs where you don't have to be real crazy. Yeah. There's jobs where you could go and you just work 10 or 15 hours a week for your space. You know, and it keeps you active, keeps you alive. You know, I, I, I'm the type of person when I stop working. I, I mean, I've got to have something to do. I go crazy. I'd have this boy. They both shut off that time. Mm -hmm. Must be cooling off. Anyway, you are a hero, providing for families. God loves the small businessman. Yeah, but you know, a lot of times, of course, our kids never knew too much about that stuff when they were little. We tried to tried not to let them know because we we had a dream. And actually, Darla just kind of decided she was she married me and she was gonna support my dream, and and she did, and we worked hard, and and I mean she worked hard too. We raised our kids; our kids all turned out wonderful, and yes, uh, they did. and uh, we're very proud of them, and we love them very much, and and they're very special to us, and, and they're not the type of kids that moved out, never, we never see them again. We hear from them almost every day, and, and uh, you know, we have that type of a relationship. And We have six beautiful grandbabies. We have six beautiful grandbabies. And that's, and, that's one of my biggest regrets. We don't get to see them nearly often enough. Yeah, but, you know, our hope and our prayers are that they all buy motor homes. And they follow us everywhere we go. His, his, his dream. <laughs> we had two for a while. but. So, Peter, you want to know how does the bathroom work, really? What? How does the bathroom work? And no, we're not off-grid. Some people set up solar, but we don't have that. That's not, that's not the kind of camping we like to do. We like hookups. We will boondock sometimes, but we have a generator. So... Yeah, well, the bathroom works just like a bathroom in a house. The only difference is, is you got a foot pedal. So whenever I go somewhere, like in a building or something, I'm always trying to find the lever on the, <laughs> to flush the toilet. But other than that, I, I dump the tank once a week, which I did uh, yesterday. If you want to know how it works, we do have a video that tells you. It's called uh, Somebody's Talking Crap. Yeah, tell you everything you want to know about dumping tanks dumping and all tanks. that kind of stuff. And, we take long showers. We take showers just like you do when you're in a house. This, all this is is a tiny house. That's all it is. This thing, refrigerator, heater, air conditioning, uh, stereo, TV, uh, hot water heater, queen size bed. I mean, we have everything here that we had in our house, just small, you know. And we don't have all the. We when we when we started selling our stuff off. We had so much stuff that we hadn't seen in years. We never had any use. I mean, it would still be stored away if we had did what we did. So, I still have a storage. I gotta, I gotta find a place to put my tools. And what we want to do is we want to buy. We've actually been looking at a piece of land that actually has a little campground on it, that is not functioning, but it has all the electricals there, the water, and all that. And I'd rip about two thirds of that out and put in a big metal building that I could put my motorhome inside and my truck and all my tools and everything. And it would just, it's in a good centrally located spot in, in the United States. And it would just give us a place I could work on my motorhome. I want to repaint it. I'm going to repaint this. And uh, 
it would just give us a, a nice place to do that kind of stuff and eventually when we start deciding that we're gonna want to get off the road i'll build a little straw bale house in one corner of the metal building and i'll just park the motor home in there and i'll talk about the old days and keep my stuff that i have and live in a little straw bale single bedroom house you know and then all our kids can come see us yeah and grandkids and stuff terry said that was a crappy video <laughs> No, we don't have a composite. We have a regular black tank. Um, there's pros and cons to that. There's people that think those are the greatest thing in the world. I don't. I uh, there's just there's a lot of work to them. They're not they're not as easy as you think. We watch this one uh, YouTuber, and they've got one in their bus. Yeah. And he's filmed it a couple times, and it's just it's just it's like. The worst litter box duty ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, frankly, you know, a five-gallon bucket. Um, so explain that, the five-gallon bucket since Peter's asking questions. Yeah, what I do is when I dump my tank, I go I go outside, I, I pull the lever, I turn on the flush. There's a sprayer that sprays the inside of the tank, and I can open the toilet flapper and look right down into the bottom of the tank, and I can see what's going on. But I take it, I fill a five gallon bucket in my shower. And after that thing's ran for a few minutes, I open it up and I dump that five gallons down as fast as I can. And it just goes in there and it takes everything from the corners and everything and washes it out. And one of the viewers suggested, he said that he's been using lemon dishwashing liquid instead of chemicals. And I bought a big thing of lemon uh, dishwashing liquid and I'll tell you what, it, I think it works better I than think chemicals. It works better than the chemicals too. So we're done with chemicals. We, yeah. that, that was, we get suggestions. I like I say, I, I'm just like everybody else that's watching here. I mean, we're we're a community, and the whole idea behind it is is I'm trying to help you, but I get suggestions from people yeah. all the time that, that think for the hair and stuff. We, I'm not afraid to learn stuff. I'm right. not afraid to try it, and I'll tell you what, it works great. I'm. Uh, uh, you know, Anything there's a lot of smart people better. watching this. Maybe a lot smarter than me. I, I don't, I don't have a problem. Right? I love learning new things and things that are that make a, uh, you know, sense. And so I thought I'd try it, and it it worked out good. But you know, getting everything out of that tank because we're sitting. Now, when you're traveling, you're going. I still do the five gallon even when we're traveling. I always do it. But when you're traveling, everything is is kind of sloshing around and they're breaking loose and everything else. So it's easier to flush it out. But when you're parked, it could just, it could build in the corners and that's what you want. And what you'll lose is you'll, you'll gain smells because the liquid in the tank is what helps with the smell. It's supposed to, you want to make sure that you, you do everything like you would in a house. You don't go outside, go wee wee and stuff because you need that liquid in there as a barrier to, to, to yeah to be above the solids to help with the odor and uh we've actually i think another thing we do is where we've had it where we want to really get the tank clean take dawn dishwashing liquid and put a big squirt in there where we get ready to roll and as we're all hooked up and running and ready to do it get a big bag of ice and dump it down in there and let that ice just kind of just ask that yeah kind of agitate around in there and that'll help break stuff to loose i've had guys tell me it doesn't work but i don't believe that i think it does i think it helps so franklin smith uh poops in a bucket <laughs> do you have a van franklin i mean frank frank scandalito are you in a van Yeah, you know, if if you're in a van, I get a I get one of those little porta potties. A buddy of mine's a over the road truck driver. I was talking about him last week. He's got a beautiful rig, and he has one of those little porta potties, and it's just got a little thing he pulls out, and he goes into the gas station or truck stop or wherever, and nobody even knows what it is, and he just dumps it, and that's it. You know, um, it's a toilet. It's just like a regular toilet. It, it it would run for him like three or four days. If you're in a, if you're out in the wilderness somewhere, you know, I mean, bears poop in the woods, dogs, you know, you know everybody, just dig a hole. Um, yeah, I got the name wrong, Franklin. I met Frank. Yeah. So Frank does not live in a van. 
And Franklin's never pooped in a bucket. Oh. Thank you very much. Well, you know, they actually make little toilet seats for buckets. Oh, uh, he okay, Frank has a travel trailer. Oh, okay. So, Lucian Childress, is he the one that's building out the... Yeah. Yeah, the interior. He is. Uh, does he have a YouTube channel? Or just I don't, pictures? Lucian, do you, have a, do you have a YouTube channel? I love those pictures. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of positive responses. People right. people are enjoying watching it. You should you should be videoing. Or at least post more on the Economic Refugees Group because people really like seeing that. Yeah, also, let me, let me, of course, there's only 21 people out here, but if you have an RV and you want to sell it, yeah, uh, you know, we were talking today when we were coming back from Duluth. I said, you know, I'll just to tell people if you want to put it on there, put it on our uh, economic yeah, refugees, mind. and I'll, I'll share it, and move it around a little bit. And if I might even talk about it on here, because I mean, that's what this is about. This, uh, you get more exposure to it, to the sale of it, too. We live this lifestyle and we we're, we enjoy it and there's a lot to it and anything that we could do to try to help, you know, I, I don't, we we went on one, uh, one uh, thing, one group and the lady, we were posting the videos and she goes, she sent me a uh, thing and said, oh, you can only post one a month. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> really? So we don't okay. post there anymore. So I don't post there. I don't, I'm like, you know. I don't want to cause her any grief. I don't want to say who it is, but I won't. I won't post on there anymore. In fact, I just basically I don't go there anymore. But uh, I'll buy. You know, I mean, as long as you're not taking too big of advantage of it. But I mean, I, I think that's part of the thing. You know, and if you buy something, if you buy, if like uh, kids get ready to buy, it sounds like, and I'm, I'm going to really hope he gets it a '95 Holiday Rambler Imperial like I have. Yeah, and I want to see some pictures, and I want to put them on here and show people. You know, I, I that's what makes it Lucian. He's been putting his on there, and he's building out a, a cargo trailer, and it's coming out really it's awesome. Pretty. It's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. So, but he and, doesn't have a YouTube channel. He said yeah, he's too well, busy. Well, use ours or whatever, however you yeah. want to do it. But that's the thing. Somebody will will have that trailer, and they'll say, okay. Now, oh, I see how he's doing that. All right, well, I'm going to do that too. So that, that's what you. Good ideas. That's how it goes, you know. And and then once he starts traveling with it, he'll find out. Well, you know, maybe I should have done this a little different, or maybe, or or this is perfect. Whatever, mm -hmm. you know. You did, nothing's ever perfect, but especially with trailers. One suggestion: never, never put a kitchen in the back of a trailer or a back of a motorhome. <laughs> Those could be a little too much whiplash effect. Whew. Dishes yeah. go everywhere. You spent a lot of time picking up. <laughs> Broken pieces of dishes. Lynn's just listening. She's at work. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Have you been to the Experimental Aircraft Association's convention in Oshkosh at the end of July? Have we been where? Experimental Aircraft Association's convention. Uh, no. I... I'll tell you what, I'm not a big fan of flying anymore. When I was... <laughs> I used to fly... I, I actually physically flew airplanes when I was a kid. My stepdad was a pilot. We used to go out flying all the time. But I I had some experiences out in the high desert of like losing a lot of altitude and stuff because of all the updrafts and everything. And it's just watching the wings on the planes flex and I'm like, okay, I don't think I want to do this anymore. It would be, I would like air shows and stuff, but they, those could be pretty dangerous too, you know, being a spectator anymore. Lynn says, oh good, I'll list our Thor when we get our HR. Do it, Lynn. Yeah. Uh, well, you should get that any day, I hope, huh? Frank Scandalito. I hope I'm saying your name right. I was thinking about a Class B, but now Class C. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, the Class Bs are, are they're awesome. You know, they're strong and they're, they got a lot of advantages, but they're a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive. And uh, you can get a lot of Class C for the money. Just be, like I say, when you... When you go to buy a Class C, be sure you pull that. Just like you on these, you always check the, the cabinets for water leaks. So on a Class C, you want to pull that mattress out that's over the cab. Mm -hmm. Those things, they... Especially if there's a front window. Yeah, the front windows like leak and the cabs leak. Uh, you know, I mean, over the cab, you just mm -hmm. got to check that area really, really close. And, I mean, it's it's not always a deal buster, but you... you 
if you see it moisture anywhere inside of there, you got to go up on the roof and look at it. Um, I've seen guys take those front windows out too. We, yeah, we did. That well, guy that was staying with Brian yeah, and uh, had the uh, Toyota, uh, yep. little Toyota uh, Dolphin or whatever right. it was. We we actually bought a Lance Cancer camper. We special ordered it. We could have got a front window. The guy said, "Don't get a window. They, <laughs> they all leak. Every one of them leaks." So we didn't get a window. It was a good idea. Peter, no, we are land lovers. We don't want to live on the water. Not our thing. I know some people do. I know, like Gone with the Winds. They started out in an RV and now they're on a sailboat. And they go everywhere. Well, and Peter's talking about a jet. They're converted. fun to watch, but way up higher though. Oh. They're fun to watch, but it's just not my thing, and it's not Bill's thing, so no. Yeah, I don't know enough about aircraft <laughs> to... I've seen where they do take and build those houses. Um, yeah. All, okay, all home-built aircraft, great air show, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I say, if I, if, if I have another stationary house, it'll be inside of a... Uh, metal steel, building. a metal building. I'll build it with straw bale inside, so there's no maintenance. You guys don't know about straw straw bale um, construction. You should you should YouTube that. It's pretty interesting. I like the whole concept. Hey, we both I, like it. Yeah, if it's if it's not enormous, you could heat it with candles. We've been in one. We yeah we've been a, in a phys couple. physically been in one, and they're. They're so soundproof. It's and warm or cool if it's hot out. When we went to that one, it was hot out, and it was really cool inside. The walls are so thick; they've got a great R, R factor. And Peter, some some people buy old boat or old jets and convert them mm -hmm. into homes. Yeah, I've did, seen that. Did that's, you do that? That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. He lives on on a boat. Part time, sometimes. he says. Yeah. yeah. We. I actually, that's when cool. I was a kid, I had a friend of mine. And his family built a sailboat in their backyard and it took them like 10 or 12 years and when they when the the youngest son and I were the same age and when he graduated from high school they were going to go on this big trip around the world and they had to get the sailboat like 25 miles to the ocean this is in California it cost them more to get that because it was such a big boat and they had to do it at night. They had to lift all the wires and everything. It cost them almost as much to get that boat to the water as it did to build it. But it was all cement hull and all. I don't know. That? Scott Helton was his name. Hmm. And uh, he had a little Volkswagen. And like the last week before they left, they were over in the, in the Stonewood parking lot rolling this thing. They just kept rolling it. <laughs> they destroyed that car. They. They were gone. I mean, they sold their house. They sold everything. They were what out of. What happened to them? Uh, I don't know. I never heard of them again. Okay. Well, guys, it's been two hours again. Yep. We we'll probably ought to wrap this up. Oh, this actually would be the shortest one. We got. Yeah. We got if about you got any more questions or comments? Yeah. Let us know. Yeah, this is the time to do it because we're about done. Ken, be sure to. Uh, to send me some pics on yeah, that. I can't wait to see. And uh, uh, I think, yeah, you, well, we talk, so you got my number. So call me if you have any questions. If I don't answer, um, it's we're just, le yeah, just leave a message. <laughs> and as soon as I'm freed up, I'll call you. We so appreciate you guys tuning in. We really do. We yeah. look forward to these chats. You guys are all, I don't know, great people. And yeah. I like the comments and the questions and that you're here and we're glad that you guys enjoy it and you're not bored <laughs> blogger gone wild why does darla look younger than you bill <laughs> because i i'm not that old i just have a lot of miles he's a high miler <laughs> franklin come will come up with a new list of questions next time that'd be great yeah that's fine you know um I have I I've, I've been talking to a few people that are interested. And I've been trying to give them some some pointers on how to go about things, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, I, I'll you know without physically being there and doing everything myself, it's it, I can I can lead you in the right direction as much as possible. 
Uh, but I, honestly, if you guys have any questions, he he loves being able to help people. He'll text. He'll he'll return your phone calls. He'll return your emails. Whatever. Um, either one of us, but he's he's the one with all the knowledge on the motor and stuff. So. Yeah. Do uh, that. Pete You're welcome. Wa Pete wants to know what Sorry. kind of heater we use. We use a Broad. B R O A N. I got a video on that as well. Yeah, we have a video. It's just a little tiny. It's just about this big, and it heats his whole motorhome. I mean, it's not going to do anything below 20 degrees or anything, but it, for where we, we don't... We hardly ever use the propane. We don't stay either. in Arizona in the summer. We don't stay in Wisconsin in the winter. So right. we we uh, we travel where the weather is moderate. How hard is it to fix the cruise control in once to know? Cruise control is... In the in the RV, are you talking? Oh. Lynn? Okay, you know what? It's not very hard. I'll tell you what it probably is, Lynn. And I had the same problem as my cable slipped. There's a there's a, a little clamp that holds the cable, <laughs> and uh, it it will slip. And all you got to do is go back there, loosen it up, pull it back, and I actually bent the little tab to hold it tighter. My cruise control works great. It's, I mean, yeah, you got to have it on these. Because this yes, thing here, navigator. this thing here, that navigator, that, that you get out on flat ground, and you're not paying attention, you'd be going 90 miles an hour. This thing just keeps picking up speed. Yeah. you got to be real careful. And That's why I like the cruise. And I leave my exhaust brake on all the time, too, so that <clears throat> it's, anytime the thing lets off, it slows it down. Peter says so, no winter camping. So, we, I mean, we live in this full time. This is all we've got. But we we try to go places where the weather's opposite. If it's freezing cold, like in Wisconsin, we were delayed getting here by, uh, I think, yeah, about a week or two, right? Because the snow was crazy, and we don't want to we don't want to deal with that. So we stayed down in Arkansas where it was warmer, and then when it gets you know too hot down in the south, we come north. And we we do sugar beets sometimes. Yeah. We got out of there where it was like uh, almost storm. it was like six or seven degrees, and the road was iced over and everything else. We do it, but we don't like to. If we if we can avoid it, we will. It it just you know, they salt the roads. I don't want to get I don't want to destroy the undercarriage of this thing. I want to get out of there before that kind of stuff happens. We have been, we've got over a salted road. And I had to wash everything all off. But, yeah. Yeah. Franklin says my home base will be in the south somewhere. I think ours will too. Yeah, well, Arkansas is where we're looking. My brother lives there, and so does our daughter. Our daughter, our For oldest now. daughter, lives there. So yeah, we'll probably end up. It's it's a moderate climate, and and most of the time in the summer we'll be in the north northern part of the country. So you know, it's not something I. It's not somewhere I'd want to live all the time unless I had to. You know, if I couldn't, if I could drive this or whatever anymore, then that'd be a different thing. I mean, there is going to come a day I think when I get old. They're already <laughs> saying you look younger than me, and but you can still drive. I can still drive. <laughs> Let's see, my wife. Where's she been, Arkansas? Huh? Where's she been? Where's that? Yeah. Oh, I have a lot yeah. in horseback. I don't know. They never built. Owned. Oh, she used to own. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we're looking near Bita is where we're looking at. So, like I say, we go down there. We spend. My brother, he's got a a full hookup site for us right next to their house. We're overlooking the pasture where the it's horses beautiful. are at. So beautiful well, spot. And we've got videos on that too when we were at at his properties checking cows it's just gorgeous there super peaceful and beautiful yep north central arkansas that's where horseshoe bend is hey peter um you know we're on we're on the, our resumes out there on workcamper.com and they they list jobs and stuff for work campers i don't know if you're aware of that but anyways i've got on there that we would work in canada and even Mexico, I probably will go on and update that because I don't think I want to go to Mexico anymore. We, but we go down there. Yeah, we travel about 150 feet inside of Mexico. <laughs> we go That's down to Algodonas across from Yuma. That's where we buy 
Instead of spending $800 on glasses, I pay $100 and I get the same quality glasses as if I pay $800. We get dental work. We get we get our... And all, we get shrimp tacos. Yeah, shrimp tacos. Their are really food's good. amazing. <laughs> and also, uh, I'm diabetic and instead of paying $70 a month for the medicine that I take, it's $45 a year. So when you're trying... When you're trying to save money, the advantage to this lifestyle is you could go where you could go get that kind of stuff done. You know, if you, uh, if when I lived in California, I was at the mercy of what was around me. You know, yeah. we're not tied to anywhere. We, if, if for some reason, which I doubt it would ever happen, this place, the, the owners here, were, they're just awesome people. We really love it. We had a big potluck the other night, last night. In fact, it was it was awesome. A big Mexican potluck. Anyway, it's a really really cool place. But, I mean, if something happened here and I was unhappy, you could ask Darla. We've done it. Take the covers off and we've done it put twice. everything away and shh, away when, we go. When we commit to doing these jobs, we finish them out. Even if we can't stand it and we're just losing our mind and pulling our hair out. We usually, but the one we quit was in Key West, Florida, and that's because they misrepresented what they wanted us to do. They wanted us to stay there for two years solid. And that's not what we wanted. We have wheels under this because we want to go. So we left there after nine days. And then we left Adventureland in Iowa because they refused to give us any help. And, well, he worked with a girl who threatened to kill him three times. Yep. And management did nothing. She didn't I try. Had, I had a woman that was fighting with him, and I asked her to please take this somewhere another time when we were not off the clock because she was badgering us in the parking lot and she pushed me so you know there's things like that you just don't have to put up with and so it's and that place is that? out of control every year and and the work campers are constantly complaining about it and uh just where i was working alone five or six work campers left before i did and uh they don't care they you know they, care. they keep these 14 and 15 year old little kids that are on Dep antidepressant drugs and can't even show up to work on time they keep them over the work campers that are there every day working hard so oh well that's their loss you know but i mean we out of eight back. years those are the only two times and they yeah. were both last year <laughs> yep and key west the big problem with key west was is it just wasn't for us it wasn't. and we got out of there just in time because then they had that hurricane that yeah, the eye of the storm went right, right over, over where we were at, destroyed the people. It would have been our we motorhome that got destroyed. There their their too. category five building got destroyed. <laughs> and they told, Oh yeah, you can leave. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't no. that wasn't what was gonna happen. So anyway, you guys, we're gonna call it tonight. Thank you for showing up. Um I mean we really enjoy this. I think we'll probably go ahead and do it again next week. I'm gonna have different camera stuff. I'll probably try it out one night before next so weekend. if you see us pop on, it'll be just a trial yeah. run to see. He might, yeah. he might get your opinion on quality of the picture or whatever if you see us on and it's not Wednesday night and we didn't announce it. Yeah, so Wednesday nights at <laughs> 7 is our usual time for Pete. I see you're going. Yep. Good night, Pete. Thanks for joining us. Seven, uh, 7 o'clock and then also we have our, uh, our group which is on Facebook which is Economic Refugees Group. Everybody come over there and sign up for that. Email yeah. is economicrefugees at hotmail.com. Right. So any of those things. And uh, Ken, I look forward to seeing those pictures and talking with you on that. And Franklin, uh, enjoy your new uh, Class C. And we'll uh, we'll get something figured out for you, get you towing that car. And Liza Jane always says goodnight. I think she's there all the time, but she doesn't comment. But we, we appreciate you being there. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's the thing. That's the, good. She's in the back of the church praying for us. <laughs> All right, guys. Good, good night. night guys. Thanks for showing. Thank you. Bye. Baby. Eh, why won't that come off?